Mark Rogers TV running down our top 10 at each position in college football heading into 2014. Hopefully you joined our series last off season. We got great response, over 4,000 views and over 110 comments. We appreciate your feedback. We want to hear from you. Again, I'm going to give my top 10 at every position. We're going to start with the quarterbacks here and then I want to hear from you. Where'd I miss it? I looked at 32 quarterbacks, got 32 quarterbacks here on the big board, had to nail it down to just 10. So we're leaving some guys out. Look at the honorable mentions section we've got in the description section down below the video because we've got some guys that just barely missed. We could probably do a video on some of those guys, like maybe the most overlooked quarterback, I believe, and the most undervalued guy is Jeff Driscoll of Florida. Yes. The statistics are not mind-blowing, but 12 touchdowns, 5 picks two seasons ago. Jeff Driscoll is a guy who wins football games when he's had little complimentary talent around him. He moves the sticks and he keeps the defense off the field. He's done well. I could talk about guys like that. We're leaving out Bo Wallace and Dak Prescott at Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Devin Gardner at Michigan, who I took a beating on in talking about him as possibly the best quarterback in the Big Ten after the Notre Dame win and even earlier than that going into the 2013 season. But uh, at the same time, the guy's got terrific skill through for 451 against Ohio State. Okay, so again, look at the honorable mention. We've got some guys that just missed it, but here's where we settled on our top 10. Let's run it down starting at number 10. And this guy is not a beautiful pocket passer. He's not a guy that uh, would have been considered for this list a year ago. Maybe not even considered for this list halfway through last season. But his team continued to win and win and win. He continued to run that offense to almost sheer perfection. The best rushing offense in college football. Forget what the numbers said throughout the season. It finally made sense at the end when their numbers were so staggering in an SEC championship game against... Missouri, a top rushing defense. Look at the stats that Missouri threw up in not uh, allowing rushing yardage, but they just couldn't help it against this Auburn rushing attack. They even ran the ball against the Tide for 300 yards and then against Florida State in the national championship game. Of course, we're talking about Nick Marshall who threw it and threw it effectively when he needed to. Less than 2,000 yards passing by just 24 yards, 59% completion percentage, 14 touchdowns, 6 picks. But of course, it's the running game. Nick Marshall with 1,100 yards rushing and 12 touchdowns and leading that offense. And again, it's a very difficult offense to execute. The timing has to be perfect. The reads have to be perfect, especially in that conference. And Nick Marshall got it done. Mid-season against Tennessee and Arkansas, we commented a number of times here on Mark Rogers TV that Nick Marshall was banged up. The shoulder was bruised. Uh, Auburn really had to adjust the game plan. They went to a lot of slip screens, a lot of screen passes underneath stuff to the backs, limited his throwing against some inferior teams to seven, eight throws per game. Then he caught stride. We wondered what would happen when they faced Georgia and Alabama in a possible SEC championship game. Well, he got healthy and he threw it very effectively. So Nick Marshall, once again, based on his leadership skills, this isn't a top 10 passers list, top 10 quarterbacks, based on the rushing effectiveness, his speed, his elusiveness, and mostly for the playmaking ability and making the right reads in that offense. Nick Marshall of Auburn at number 10. All right, at number nine, we've got another guy that you would have never dreamed would make this list a season ago. But after winning the Rose Bowl and doing it in the fashion that he needed to against a Stanford defense that was legitimately one of the top five or six defenses in college football, Connor Cook deserves it. Rewind a year. We blasted Michigan State for having this great defense that could not be supported by even a marginal offense. The rushing game, pedestrian, with uh, Le'Veon Bell moving on to the Pittsburgh Steelers. The offensive line was at times spotty. The quarterback play with Andrew Maxwell, atrocious. No playmaking on the outside. Dropping footballs like nobody's business. With, it, with the limited number of snaps that Michigan State throws the ball, they were near the top of uh, college football in dropped passes. Just not receiving plays, not even uh, the routine plays out of the wide receivers. In steps Connor Cook. He got his shot against TCU on the final drive in the bowl game in 2012, and he delivered uh, the game-winning field goal to win it uh, for the Spartans. 
Then he battled it out with Maxwell. He won the starting job. Uh, he adamantly said, I should have been on the field for the last drive against Notre Dame, but he was not. Three incompletions later, Michigan State loses its only game. And in hindsight, with all the controversial calls, who knows, Michigan State might have been playing in the BCS National Championship game. But Connor Cook, uh, very much under the radar until that Rose Bowl game, and really probably against Ohio State in the uh, Big Ten Championship game, under the radar, his improvement. But you could see it against very quality defenses like Iowa in particular. Check out that game. He really delivered the ball against the Hawkeyes on the road in a big win for Michigan State. Again, Connor Cook then lit up Ohio State, which happened quite a few times in 2013, but then most impressively in the Rose Bowl with two touchdown passes and 332 yards passing against a Stanford defense. And remember the flub he made before halftime. The horrible throw when he was backpedaling and the rush was coming at him and he had no idea where the ball was going. Pick six. Could have put Michigan State in a hole. Could have changed his mindset, but he battled back from that, from that play, that horrible play, and delivered again to win the Rose Bowl for Michigan State. Connor Cook at number nine from Sparty. All right, at number eight, we've got a gunslinger in Sean Mannion of Oregon State. This guy loves to throw the football, 66% completion percentage, only second to Derek Carr moving on to the NFL in yards passing last season, almost 4,700 yards passing out of Sean Mannion. 37 touchdowns, yes, the 15 picks. He will throw it up there. Had seven interceptions and two critical losses back-to-back -back against USC and Arizona State. Possibly the two top defenses in that division, certainly in the Pac-12. And he threw it all over the place and threw the seven picks. So he can be awfully bad at times. But this guy delivers the football. He can make all the throws. Sean Mannion, again, with a brilliant season last season for Oregon State, almost pulled off the win against Oregon and probably put up more points and more yardage. Haven't checked the stats uh, to a T, but the most points and the most... Uh, Offensive production against the Oregon Ducks and almost pulling off an upset in the Civil War to conclude the 2013 season. A one-point loss for Oregon State there. Sean Mannion at number eight. All right, now we move on to a guy that only played four or five football games last season. He doesn't play for a major power, doesn't play in a major conference either. But we're talking about Chucky Keaton of Utah State. As a sophomore, 65% completion percentage, 3,400 yards passing, 27 touchdowns, 9 picks. Provides the dual threat as well. This guy's a superior athlete. 600 plus yards rushing, 8 touchdowns rushing. This guy carried Utah on its back, Utah State on his back, to lead them to 11 wins, a bowl victory, a top 25 finish at Utah State, and a conference championship as well. Unfortunately, blew out the knee against BYU in Game 5. We will see how Chucky Keaton responds, but we're counting on a healthy Chucky Keaton just being amazing for Utah State, a team that was really under the radar last season but made it to the Mountain West Conference Championship game, that conference that's just below the BCS tier, the next best conference after that BCS level. Again, Chucky Keaton, we expect him to have a big year in the Mountain West at number seven. At number six, we go back out to the Pac-12 and we look at uh, Taylor Kelly. So we're loving the Pac-12 at this point and we will some more as well. Arizona State's quarterback, 62% completion percentage, 3,600 yards, 28 touchdowns, 12 picks at nine rushing touchdowns. Taylor Kelly can make all the throws. He is an exceptional quarterback. Got to see him light up USC, a very thin USC defense in terms of depth, but very, very talented. Check out the USC defenders moving on to the NFL. It's pretty impressive. USC is not down as far as we would think. Taylor Kelly annihilated that defense. He looked good against a Wisconsin defense as well. And Taylor Kelly really uh, led this team back against Stanford, made it a game after getting blown out and turning over the football early in the football game against the Cardinal Brought Arizona State back, gave them a shot uh, to win on the road at Palo Alto. So we've got Taylor Kelly of Arizona State. We expect him to continue the upward swing and uh, move himself into the elite quarterbacking status in college football 